So in this episode, let's, let's talk about EPUB. That's EPUB and EPUB3. Now I know we don't need them on Affinity Publisher, but lots of people want to know about it and lots of people try to use it. And if you really want to, maybe you can. So let's talk about EPUB. What's the difference between EPUB and EPUB3? And do you really need an ebook? Well, let's look at what's involved. EPUB 2 and EPUB 3. Well, EPUB 2 is EPUB. It's the original. And the new version is EPUB 3. And if you're an aspiring author, you'll probably heard of EPUB and EPUB 3. But what's the difference between the two? In this post, we'll explain the critical differences between these two formats so that you can choose the right ones for your needs. Put simply, EPUB and EPUB 3 are ebook formats adhering to specific standards set out by the International Digital Publishing Forum. Where they're very similar in appearance, there are significant differences between how these specifications handle various aspects of ebook creation that can significantly affect what you see when viewing an ebook. So, what is an EPUB file? EPUB is a digital file format used to create and distribute ebooks. It's a standard format that most ebook reading devices support. The EPUB format is accepted and distributed by most major ebook stores and platforms, including Google, Apple's iBooks, now called Books, Barnes and Noble's Nook, and Kobo. The EPUB file format is best suitable for electronic publications with reflowable text. Now that's important to remember. It's more like a marked up document structure with associated images and illustrations if you can fit them in. Now what's an EPUB 3 file? EPUB 3 is the latest version of EPUB and it's a HTML5 standard based file format. It allows the EPUB 3 files to contain videos, audio and interactive multimedia elements. In a nutshell, it's an enhanced and more versatile version of the original EPUB format. It allows for more multimedia content, interactivity and animation. The EPUB 3 format makes it perfect for digital textbooks, cookbooks, travel guides and other types of interactive content. If you're thinking about self-publishing an EPUB or want to make your current EPUB more engaging, you should consider using the EPUB 3 format. An EPUB 3 file is best suited for a fixed layout book, which heavily depends on images and videos. And that's an important point to remember. EPUB 2 does not support scripts and interactivity features. EPUB 3 version supports scripted content i.e. interactivity using JavaScript language. EPUB 2 does not support the text-to-speech facility. EPUB 3 provides text-to-speech facilities, pronunciation lexicons, PLS, inline phonemes, speech and other speech features. It also enables the use of SMILE, Synchronized Multimedia Integration Language. Ooh, very technical. For representation of synchronized text and audio. Suppose you're unsure which format to use to reach the widest audience possible with your ebook or digital publication. Both formats have their advantages. But keep in mind, EPUB 2 is reflowable. That means no images, no fancy fonts, no tables, no audio, no video, just the text and fairly straightforward text at that. EPUB 3 can be produced just like an interactive book and they're very good, full of rich features, but not all ebook readers can display EPUB 3 files. 
Here's a table summarising the key differences between EPUB and EPUB 3. Multimedia support, no and yes. Formatting, XHTML and CC, CSS2 and HTML5 and CSS3. Accessibility is limited in EPUB and in EPUB 3 it's improved. Support all major ebook readers and publishers will read an EPUB file. EPUB 3 all major ebook readers and publishers will now read EPUB 3, but early ones won't. You'll get all sorts of strange results. Creating an EPUB book. If you're creating a new ebook, it's best to use EPUB 3. It's the most recent and supported format and it offers a number of advantages over EPUB 2. Except, keep in mind, it's not reflowable by nature. If you're converting an existing ebook from EPUB 2 to EPUB 3, you should weigh the benefits of the new features against the work involved in the conversion. If your ebook does not contain any multimedia or interactive elements, and you're happy with the current formatting, then there's no need to convert. However, if you think that your ebook could benefit from the new features of EPUB 3, or if you want to make your ebook more accessible, then it's worth converting it to EPUB 3. Now, this is the technical side of EPUB. Here's an example of an EPUB 3 formatted document. This is the main package file, and it contains information about the ebook, such as the title, author, publisher, and contents. It also specifies the order of the chapters in the book. The other files in the ebook are the content files, which contain the actual content of the ebook, such as the text, images, and CSS style sheets. And to read this ebook, you would open it in an EPUB Reader app. The app will load the package and then display the contents files in the order specified in the spine. Now this is an example of one of the content files, chapter 1, XHTML. This file contains the text and formatting for the first chapter of the book. The link elements in the head section of the document tells the EPUB reader to load the CSS style sheet. This is just a simple example of an EPUB 3 document. EPUB 3 documents can be much more complex and they can include multimedia events. Now, while that's quite frightening, and most people try and avoid it, these files can be seen in any EPUB document. If you have a document called .epub, change the word EPUB to zip and unzip the file, and there's all these files residing inside that. Now, here's an example of the content file, chapter 1 of an EPUB file. Very much the same as the EPUB 3, only there are slight differences and you can wade through them at your leisure. Displaying an EPUB document. Now this is really easy because there's a lot of free document readers around. To display an EPUB 3 document, you need to use an EPUB Reader app. EPUB Reader apps are available for all major platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS and Android. Once you've installed an EPUB Reader app, you can open the EPUB 3 document by double-clicking on it. The EPUB Reader will load the document and display it in a readable format. Most EPUB Reader apps allow you to customise the reading experience. For example, you can change the font size, font style and line spacing. You can also change the background colour and margin sizes. And that's EPUB. EPUB 3 is slightly different. If the EPUB 3 document contains multimedia elements such as images, audio and video, the EPUB reader will display them in line with the text. You can also tap or click on multimedia elements to view them in full screen. Here are some popular EPUB reader apps. Calibra, which is probably the most popular and common one, runs on all platforms. Adobe Digital Edition all platforms. You even get a, a, a set of books that come with Adobe Digital Editions. Free books and free chapters. 
Apple Books, iOS, Mac OS, Google Play Books and Kobo Books runs on all the platforms. Now working in Publisher. Well, it's really difficult if you're going to do reflowable text, EPUB or EPUB 3. Basic text only, remember. Special fonts are inline and so are small images. But inline text formatting is a powerful tool that can be used to create visually appealing and informative documents. By using the techniques described, you can learn how to do inline text formatting in Affinity Publisher and create documents that are both professional and engaging. Now on the left there you can see the detailed examples from the help file of Affinity Publisher on how to go about doing that. Now not to worry, it's here on the next page. Now there it is in more detail and if you want to copy that or read it you can pause that or you can look in the Affinity Publisher help file and it will tell you all about it. Now there's an example. To add an image in line in Affinity Publisher, do the following steps, which is what I've done here. Place the image in your document. You can do this by dragging and dropping the image file onto your document or going to File and Place. Select the image. Click on the Inline button in the toolbar and drag the image to the desired location in your text. Click outside the image to apply your changes. The image will now be inserted in your text and will flow with the text as you make changes. So if you put a whole paragraph ahead of it, that image will still move with the text. You can resize and reposition the image as needed. Here are some additional tips for adding images inline in Publisher. You can use the text wrap feature to do this. Select the image and then go to Arrange text wrap, make text wrap around object. You can adjust the spacing between the image and the text by using the text wrap settings in the properties panel. You can also use the text frame tool to create a frame around the image and the text. This can be useful for creating more complex layouts. Once you've added an image in line, you can format the text around the image as needed. You can also add borders and other effects to the image. Inline images can be a great way to add visual interest and information to your documents. By following the tips above, you can learn how to add images inline in Affinity Publisher and create documents that are both professional and engaging. Now here's an example. You can see right on the left hand side there, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. That's showing up in a PDF file. And then the middle image is that as the cover in, in um, Apple Books. The same thing converted to an EPUB file with Calibra and showing in Apple Books. And there it is, the publisher EPUB, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. You can see the little image of the dog in line with the word dog. The word party has been changed in line. Now, would you create an EPUB? Well, it depends on a lot of things. If you create your document in Publisher and export it as a PDF file, you can then use Calibra to convert it to an EPUB document and you'll either have a reflowable document or you'll have a document with lots of pages and text and uh, URL links and multimedia and all of those things. It depends what you're looking for. But EPUB is not a big mystery. It's just another way of producing a readable book for devices, for portability. So that's the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed it and, and learnt something from it. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.